Hello, my name is Bogdan Funchuk, and this is a video on FOIA analysis. What is FOIA analysis? FOIA analysis is a branch of mathematics, a special, elegant type of mathematics, that helps us understand how nature works. From biology to chemistry to physics to finance to medicine, the tools and methods of FOIA analysis help us understand how to model natural phenomena and explain things that we may never have thought work the way we thought they work. Now, FOIA analysis in itself is a very applied type of mathematics. But before I delve into the applications, let me first introduce you to some of the interesting theory. Let me give you an insider's look of how the theory works. If I were to try to describe FOIA analysis using just one sentence, here is what I would say. FOIA analysis allows us to write any reasonable function as an infinite linear combination of sines and cosines. Mathematically, this is how we would express this. We would say that our function f of t can be written as the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of some constant a sub k cosine 2 pi omega sub k t plus b sub k sine. 2 pi omega sub k t plus some sort of constant out front. So let's say that constant is a naught plus our infinite sum. So in this expression, we have three different constants, a naught, a sub k, and b sub k. And we wish to express what these constants look like mathematically. Mathematically, you can calculate them very easily. A naught is equal to 1 over p, where p is the period, of the integral from 0 to p of our function f of t dt. A sub k, another constant, is equal to 2 over the period, the integral from 0 to p, the period, of f of t cosine of 2 pi omega sub k t dt. And b sub k, the second constant, is very similar to a sub k. It is just as simple. And it's written as b sub k is equal to 2 over p, same thing as before, 0 to p of f of t sine of 2 pi w sub k t dt. So it's the exact same thing as a sub k, but with a sine term instead of a cosine term. The last thing that we don't know yet in our equation for the trigonometric Fourier series representation of a function is what is exactly w sub k t, or omega sub k t. What omega is in physics, it's essentially period. And when we use Fourier series, we use them to model periodic functions very often. Functions that have relevance in mathematical physics. So omega sub k is essentially the frequency of the kth component. So as we know, frequency is 1 over the period. And when we say it's the kth component of the frequency, we wish to say that the frequency may be some sort of an integer multiple depending on the type of scenario, the type of physical process that we are talking about. So W sub k is equal to k over p, the period, for any k greater than 1. 1, 2, 3, all the way up to infinity. It's an integer multiple of the frequency. Now let us pause for a second here and look at this equation that we have up there. The f of t is equal to a naught plus the infinite sum of the trigonometric terms. What does it mean? How can we possibly describe it in just one easy sentence? 
Essentially, what it means is that we can rewrite a function, f of t, as an addition of sines and cosines. That, ladies and gentlemen, is amazing. In fact, it is so amazing that when Jean Fourier, the 19th century French mathematician who came up with this theory, first proposed this, he was unanimously rejected by the mathematical community. According to Riemann, when Fourier first proposed his bold conjecture in 1807 to the Paris Academy, the famous mathematician Lagrange was so astounded and so surprised that he said there is no way such an assertion could possibly be valid and simply refused to accept it. So if this statement seems strange or in any way counterintuitive to you, you are not the first. Lagrange, Laplace, Legendre, and other prominent mathematicians of the day felt the same way and it wasn't for another two decades that Foye's bold conjecture was finally accepted. In 1828, exactly 21 years after Fourier's unsuccessful debut, the famous French mathematician Dirichlet rigorously proved Fourier's conjecture by assigning sufficient conditions to a function to guarantee that our Fourier series sum actually converges to the function. It is said that Dirichlet's rigorous proof gave birth to the age of rigor in mathematics. But let's say that reading mathematical proofs isn't exactly your cup of tea. And let's say that you wish to have an intuitive fingertip understanding of how this works. How do you think about it? How do you absorb it? How do you accept it without it being some sort of virtual reality? Well, what I would do is I would make a simple analogy. I would make an analogy with linear algebra, where we very often express a vector as a linear combination of its constituent vectors. Here, we are dealing with something very similar. We are expressing a function as a linear combination of constituent functions, sines and cosines. So in linear algebra, we have vector spaces. Here, we have function spaces. This leads directly into the fascinating field of functional analysis. In fact, this is the point where we see that mathematics is a very cross-disciplinary nature. There's this cross-pollination of ideas happening all the time between different fields of mathematics. For example, in number theory, we use something very similar to these ideas when we wish to express an irrational number as a linear combination of rational numbers. For instance, have you ever wondered when you have typed into a calculator, for instance, some sort of a number, and you get an irrational number back, and you see all of those different digits that come after the period? So like 5.67432, and then it just keeps on going. Have you ever wondered why that happens? See, the reason is that sometimes when we wish to express an irrational number, we need to use infinitely many rational numbers to express all of the digits that come after the dot. Speaking of calculators and speaking of world applications, how do calculators even work? Have you ever considered why a calculator can give you an answer so, so incredibly fast and it doesn't even matter what you type into it. You can type into it 1 plus 1, you get 2, or you can type into it something very complicated and you'll get an answer approximately just as fast. The reason behind why that works and why calculators are so good at crunching numbers so quickly is because they have an algorithm inside of them where they reconvert any type of mathematical input that you give them into either Fourier series, such as sines and cosines, or into polynomials, such as the infinite series that you are familiar with from calculus 2, depending on the algorithm of the calculator. 
That is exactly what makes crunching numbers such an incredibly easy and rapid task for any high-tech, high-speed, highly sophisticated processing device.